Aloha. Hi everyone. Right Aloha. here. Hey. Right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. So I gotta tell you, it's windy. There's jets taking off. It's noisy, and I'm not sure if you can even hear us. But I'll up the volume a bit on my editing, and I'll do the best I can. Um, brother here is gonna. You wanna say your name or anything? Yeah, I am Apollo. Uh, and we are uh, here ready to do a quick devotional. And he's going to share a, a little Bible verse and some thoughts. And then we'll start giving you a little update about the Mission Boat Hope and what's happening here in Hawaii. In the brief that we have here is the 15th of December devotional on the book, We Shall Receive Power, um, which is part of uh, one of the most treasured of our uh, Christian experience. So, we have here 1 Corinthians 15, 57. The Bible says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a promise here in the devotional that we have the victory for sure. Um, and the victory is related to a battle. battle. So, uh, here is clearly uh, explained that we all are as Christian soldiers in a battle and the battle is between darkness and light and we receive that resources that we need and everything to get the victory so it's as simple as that him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out is the promise also here. So that's all for this morning. Nothing well, thank more you. invisible. Thank you for sharing that. Now for our viewers, you have kind of a thick accent. Where are you originally from? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm an American with a strong accent. Uh, 20 something years ago, coming from Romania, from Eastern Europe. Yes, and I love Romania. I mean, the people there have been very good to me. Spent time at uh, Hedegalia and uh, actually quite a few different cities doing music and music ministry. So I have fond memories. So Gary, tell yeah. us about you. People have put some some uh, lays on his shell lays, and that's a kukui nut lay. They've yeah. given you a lot of love here in Hawaii, and you've enjoyed your time. You've been here. We've been here a little bit, about a month, and you've been here about you know, three uh, days. Yeah, <coughs> four days, four great days. Wonderful, and he's been a great help on the boat. So we're gonna give you an update. Anything you would like to say? Uh, people are very kind here, the lays, the love, the, the kindness. It's um, a lot of light here, enjoying it very much. A lot of suns, a lot of sunshine. Be people there in the cold areas like Alaska. Or well, on the California. other side of the coin, looks like I came with the rainy time because the last two, three days, been Being rainy. here was kind of rainy. Oh, first day was sunny, so yeah, but that's a matter. Here in Hawaii, even the rain is special and great. Yeah, so when it comes to ministry, and I'm going to pray here, it's going to the foot of the cross. It's going to Christ, submitting our wishes, our will, whatever we think we should be doing, really, before the throne of, of grace, because we don't deserve salvation, but Christ has given it to us, and out of love for Him, we want to serve Him. But we go to Him, and then we share what Christ has done for us. And that's what I want to do today on this video, is share what God has done for us here. But also share some of the struggles that we've had. And uh, so let's pray. Loving Father in Heaven, as we share a little bit with the people out there watching, we just pray that it would uh, help them in their relationship with You. Uh, we don't want to inspire them, but we want You to inspire them. And if somehow our deeds or actions here are inspiring, Lord, help them to see that it's you, it's not us, and that they would uh, be touched to, to understand not only the challenges, but the blessings that come from having a vessel, a boat, for not only for travel, but for interacting with people and meeting them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Jesus traveled on a boat. You know, yeah. and uh, the boats that he traveled on probably weren't as nice as this one, right? I mean, but uh, <coughs> beauty is all in the eye of the beholder, and we had an experience. I'll just start talking about it right now because I'm over here in Hawaii with you, Gary, 
because there was a man who we believe was mission minded who wanted to be here and help with the ministry a bit by staying on the, this vessel to, to keep an eye on, to watch it and help with the harbor fees. Now it's not like this is a primary place of residence, but we need ongoing interaction with this boat. We need people watching it because little things like if the hose broke over there and it started spraying water in here, who's gonna be here to turn it off? The boat could sink, the bilge pump could not work. So I thought about it. Uh, I, I want to be here to make sure he's happy and everything goes good. I got here. A lot of the wires inside the boat hooked up to lights weren't working. So we fixed a lot of stuff. The man did show up. He was not happy with the boat at all. And I want to be careful that I don't, don't say anything derogatory. And I want to read this right here. It says, love is unsuspecting, ever placing the most favorable construction upon the motives and acts of others. Love will never needlessly expose the faults of others. It does not listen eagerly to unfavorable reports, but rather seeks to bring to mind some good qualities of the one defamed. Love is not only, love not only, wait for this jet here. only bears with others faults but cheerfully submits to whatever suffering and inconvenience such forbearance makes necessary this love never faileth as a precious treasure it will be carried by its possessor through the portals of the city of god alas that this precious treasure is so lightly valued and so little sought by many who profess the faith so i don't want to be in the wrong I want to follow those principles and I don't want to bash anyone I don't want to mention the name I just want to share with the viewers you who are aware of our ministry what is actually happening so you have a clear understanding um, we work very hard to make sure that the payments on this slip are made every single month but when someone who is from our faith and someone who is interested in mission work submits and commits to making those payments for this month and this month, I'll just say October and November, <coughs> or November and December, I wasn't sure on that. That's kind of up in the air. And they pay to the harbor. They pay the money to someone who goes to the harbor. Then you get here, you work, and they, they want their money back. Um, it puts us in a very difficult situation. And I'm trusting the Lord. And so... Our brother here came over, Apollo, Gary came with me. They're going to share their perceptions of the vessel a little bit so we can, it's not just coming from me. A lot of times I do videos, it just comes from me. I want them to explain and, and share some of their, um, you know, perceptions or opinions, I guess, really opinions on the condition of the vessel. Um, and I just wanna let you know that, yeah, we haven't paid this month. I did pay the man $1,800 back and uh, sent him some kind text and I, I wish him the best. And I think at his age, he was up there at age that uh, God is working out other arrangements for him and I trust the Lord that on, on all of that. So it's exciting to see what God is doing because we don't, I don't really know who's gonna stay here, what's gonna be happening. I just know that our ministry doesn't have the $500 a month. It's almost 600 actually. Doesn't have that amount of money to pay something like this. However, it is, um, and it it's, comes with a car. You know, we have a vehicle. So vehicle, uh, this nice vessel, which, you know, if you know how to operate a boat, I told people, if you have your boating license, take the boat out, enjoy it, you know, take it around the island whatever you want to do it's not like you have to just stay here in this harbor uh, I just want people to understand that this is a ministry not a hotel not a uh, not something that's for, for just for fun um, and with those things being said go ahead brother well Paula, well, what do you think about this boat and your experience so far well for me the boat was very welcoming uh, I came Monday night late and uh, at night I just found a place to stay and uh, to enjoy clean air of Hawaii 
and of course uh, the boat is is a cute nice boat i learned that is in 1972 and uh, kind of a special year of uh, this uh, type of boats and uh, also it's it's nice and beautiful we did some other things here uh, that i really enjoyed like to uh, get the duty on our hands and to improve certain things around and uh, definitely I, I really really enjoyed the boat uh, it's a nice well, we enjoyed place you to and I enjoyed your helps with you cleaning up sawdust and he cleaned up all the sawdust and then he started coming up with ways to not let the sawdust even fall he would put a bag around it so we would cut boards and stuff that was that was really nice I enjoyed that what do you say Gary my thoughts are this boat is um, very welcoming and not perfect and I love sleeping outside right on the cockpit here just because the air is so fresh and nice in Hawaii. The temperature, the weather, it's very nice. Short sleeves, shorts, we're December 15th. I can't ask for anything better than this. Coming from New England, the cold, the freezing. This is pleasant and nice and I, you know, the, Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know, I don't want to complain. Anything I have is, is necessities is great. It's great here. Not perfect, great. And I find, you know, the problem with Christianity is the Christians. And we're spoiled in America. And boy, we want this, we want that. We want a perfect bed. We want better food, dessert. Just live with the necessities, WWJD. That's all I have to say. Well, then, then, yeah, when, when, when people are not happy, they could probably uh, have to be 30-something years in Eastern Europe in one of the satellites of the Soviet Union, and they could make a difference very easy between what's here, the uh, difficult place and in, unpleasant, and what could be under uh, that uh, type of uh, so, so, uh, thing. So you're from Romania. You were there during... Um, oppression or times of hardship? Yeah, half of my life I... I uh, what would you I say there in, in the winter time during the hardest of times under the Ceausescu versus here in Hawaii on this boat what would the level of stress or difficulties be? Well, oh, I, 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 I will not try to go to the boat necessarily. I will go to the um, boat combined with the, the stress and the pressure that you have over there and the, the lack of freedom that comes with all that uh, system that will uh, exercise that type of uh, um, authority that is beyond uh, normal uh, life that we have here. So. Um, because uh, I experienced that uh, type of not uh, being able to do what I could do here and enjoy this boat and be with friends around and uh, you, you have to stop to every checkpoint and explain people where are you coming from to the law enforcement and where are you going and uh, what's going on in your life uh, even uh, telling you things that is extremely difficult to handle sometimes uh, from a human freedom uh, standpoint. So, uh, related to these uh, objections and uh, things here, uh, well, you need to be there and to experience that maybe in North yeah. Korea or something, I guess. Well, I really appreciate the love and support of everybody that's had a burden for this boat. Let me share with you my personal um, emotion or experience with this with the boat. Uh, as a kid, we slept on a boat once. I thought it was the, that was like the highlight of my life. Just the movement of the boat, the sound of the lines and the fresh air and the water. Look at this. When I see my daughter here, she's three years old. She was two and a half. She was over here. She sat here. She, her eyes are so big, and she's just looked at the airplanes. And you know, it's it's absolutely a beautiful experience to be on a boat. And I love it so much. I just praise God every day. I wake up and I go to bed, and I sleep so well on this boat. 
it is such a privilege and a blessing to be here. And I think to myself, how could anyone not enjoy this sort of thing? It's floating on the water. It's in the elements of nature. You know, either you like boats or you don't, I guess. But I love vessels because it, it reminds me Jesus traveled on a boat, preached from a boat. And you have this freedom. You get away from what I call the shackles of sin in the world. When you get out in the ocean, you're away from it. You're gone. You're freed from the shackles of sin in the, in the world. The same with an airplane. And I feel this freedom from just the, the world's hustle and bustle and stress. And when you're out in the ocean, you actually can go anywhere in the world with this boat. You can, I mean, pretty much, you can, if I want to go to Australia, New Zealand, or California, or Philippines, um, with the proper equipment, which I'm working on getting, like a water, well, even without a water maker, pretty much with a tarp, we got lots of tarps, you can collect rainwater. <coughs> so, yeah, so I enjoy the boat. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about ministry on a boat. It's really interesting. A house, this has been my experience. Let's say we have a house. There's lots of houses around. Pretty much everybody lives in a house or an apartment or something. And you want to talk with someone. You want to witness to them. You know, you're, you're trying to use Christ's method alone. You're trying to start with friendship. How do you start that friendship? Maybe you met in a store. Maybe you met on the street. Maybe you met like we did with Forrest at the stoplight just waiting to cross the highway. I mean, the road. We meet people different ways. Do we always invite them to our house? Come on over to our house. A house is a very private space and people in this big city don't usually invite people over to the house. They don't want them to know where they live until they get to know them. But it's really easy to invite them. Hey, you want to come down to the boat? We have a boat. We're going to go out. Almost everybody is interested. Very few people are not, um, are against it because maybe they get seasick. And you don't have to go out in the ocean. You can just invite them to sit in the cockpit and talk story. Um, but it gives a door, it's an open door for a conversation. And we get to talk about, you know, the water and the ocean and whales and all the things you get to see and swimming or seeing the dolphins and jumping in and swimming with them if we want to. Here comes another airplane. It's going to be noisy in a minute. That's a huge one. <coughs> I call it a platform, a witnessing platform in real life, not online, but a, a real life witnessing platform to interact with people. We've had many baptisms from people who first met just sitting on this boat. You know, one lady that got baptized, she was a previously an Adventist married to a pastor's son and she had some horrible experiences and infidelity and things that happened. She came to this boat because she knew the previous owner and it was in the same spot in another harbor and she came to the boat looking for the this owner, <laughs> Captain Bob they called him. And he wasn't there. I said, no, I'm the new owner and you know I I started conversating. Anything to get a conversation started is what I'm after. You know, if they got him the wrong, no, nope, you're at the right boat. <laughs> you're at the right person, and come on board. If he's your friend, you know, uh, if if then you're my friend, sort of thing. And so that person has come here what two or three times and sat here and brought us food and ate with us. And I'm just glad that we've been able to impact her life. You know, in a way, she cried and she's so grateful to to uh, have some sort of. Um, positive thing happening in her life and she loves the Lord and coming back to the Lord in the way that she has has been meaningful to her you know when you've been burnt by Christians or especially like Gary he's he's not an Adventist uh, but he believes in the Sabbath he believes in Jesus he loves the Lord but he is really not impressed with with religious affiliations or religion as you called it so I, I just to say, and you're right on that, and just to add on that, the I just feel like the, all the religions have become like the Tower of Babel. And you know, Jesus said, you know, hope, faith, charity, love, above all is love. And when you come to religions, 
they don't love everybody. They really don't. The hypocrisy in all religions, all religions, not everybody in all religions, but all religions have become hypocrites. Yeah. And this is what the day has become. It totally is the truth that the problem with Christianity, because Christians are supposed to be Christ-like, but Jesus was perfect. The problem with Christianity is the Christians. Religions have become an iron fist. It's more the the name, not so much, and their actions that are Christ-like. So, thank you for sharing that. Um, the other way that you know, in interacting with people, when you take them out sailing or just motor boating, you know, or snorkeling, whatever they want to do on the boat, we pray before every single trip. They immediately know. They're like, "Wow, oh, this is." ministry this is a Christian boat this is great um, some people don't comment but that's okay and I take videos of them I give them a video of their trip many many people have been in Hawaii for whatever period of time they came for and they said this boat trip was the highlight of their entire experience one couple were getting divorced they decided to cancel their divorce and not get divorced and stay together because I was able to, you know, I have a sound system here. I played some of their favorite songs they played when they were, you know, courting as kids 30 years earlier. This was a long-term marriage. And the sunset was going down, the music started, and we're sailing. And you can see things happening in their eyes. And they, they keep put out his hand, she grabbed it, held it, and that was really special and meaningful. So it is definitely a ministry. Um, sort of project it's just kind of hard to explain <coughs> all the different ways that we use the boat as ministry we have gospel uh, karaoke people sing gospel music we take the boat over there throw the anchor in the area where all the homeless people are they live there and we sing to the homeless and we preach and we do a uh, service like Jesus did from the ocean to the shore and they line up on the shore to listen to us um, if that's not ministry I don't know what is and we, you know, I got to be careful on how much I say because I don't want, want that word to get out and then people start flocking here to use the boat as housing. But I can't tell you how many homeless people we fed and helped and uh, provided, you know, essential uh, comforts, food, and counseling and things like that. We're taking in someone today who is deaf and we're looking forward to meeting this person and sharing um, the boat and we're going to be doing work on the boat. So back to what I was saying here about our financial needs. This month I couldn't pay. I gave all the money back to the man. We got a donation. L let me tell you this miracle. You were riding in the car. You were thinking, okay, so this man wants his money back. How are we going to pay it back? I got a phone call from some people, Canadians. I've never met them in person. <coughs> Got a little tickle in my throat, sorry. But they said, hey, we have uh, $1,500. We just sent you in your PayPal. I knew immediately, okay, God is providing the money to give this person back, and God's going to bless again, and somehow we're going to have the money to pay for the slip fee. Because we're late, it's $100 more, so it's $100 added on to the 505 plus the parking, so it's like 645, something like that. And I just know that God's gonna provide that, so with faith, I decided we're going to go ahead and do some more improving on the boat, and we're not gonna leave to the big island like we had previously planned. We're gonna improve the boat, and we're gonna trust the Lord. And then my son calls me and says, Dad, um, I got laid off from work, I'm coming over there. He just jumps on a flight, he comes over, he helps me with some work on the boat. He went to Molokai for a few days. We had a wonderful time together, and then he had to go back to California. He was only here like six days, something like that. You know, that's a miracle that he came. Um, then Apollo shows up, and he's yes. helped me immensely with the boat. Um, some of the things that we've done, let's just go over that. Um, a couple of the riggings broke, and the front furler, which is the front forestay cable going up, 
to fix that and really replace it would be almost five thousand dollars forty five hundred dollars just for the parts maybe five thousand five or maybe six thousand dollars but we were able to get a cable brand new cable for five hundred dollars and we were able to use the existing equipment and do some things that supposedly are impossible but gary and i with prayer and patience and a lot of effort on the dock here we've been able to get the cable fed back through the tube and get that uh, almost fixed now done the one of the side stays one of the it's called the chain plate broke and i've been praying about that for quite a while <coughs> show you this a man on a boat right across from us said hey i got this i'll sell you for a hundred dollars he sold me this for a hundred dollars this is something you can strap on the side of the boat but it's stainless steel basically a chain plate it hooks it's called a chain plate because it hooks to not a chain a cable boats don't make a lot of sense sometimes because they call things things that aren't really what they're being called you know you just have to if you're a boat person you understand but uh, if not it's hard to understand like the bathroom is the head you know so and this is the cockpit but it's not a it's not an airplane you think of an airplane when you think of a cockpit um we wanted to have our books in a shelf and i've been praying a long time maybe a year or two maybe yeah a couple years or more about how to do a bookshelf and how to store the books and the lord really helped us and i'll show you some pictures of that look at another video maybe i'll attach it so the bookshelf, place for the keyboard. We do music on the streets and in the boat. So I put a, and the last thing, countertop. A lot of people have been negative. It's really interesting. Even people from our church have been so negative about things like, oh, the kitchen looked horrible. There were some dirty dishes in the sink. And, you know, I usually, it's hard when you are staying and working in a boat and then you take a group out and I just like to shut the hatch and, you know, we were on the outside and we go out for a sail. But I appreciate the criticism. It helps me in line, it keeps me in line. And I, I don't want junk and I don't want um, dirty dishes. Some people looked in here, one man, and said it's trash. And I mean, I've had people be bluntly, um, in their opinion, honest. But uh, I'll tell you, um, God has blessed. We rebuilt the diesel engine on this. It has a nice uh, Volvo engine. But in addition, I felt impressed to engineer and design a special aluminum thick motor mount and put a the latest state-of-the-art motor in addition to the diesel. And the day I was, I went ahead and designed this motor mount, sent it into a, a steel place that had the CAD program and and they created a 3D image and then they manufactured this thing for me. And it cost about maybe $400 is all and then $300 to ship it from California. But the motor was about $5,000 and 20 horse. I said, I explained the size of the boat. I said, I need the perfect engine for this size boat and this weight and whatever. Japanese you know, engine design, Japanese motor. Um, it was in Texas, I found the motor in Texas. And it's an amazing motor, but I didn't have the money. But a man that I helped who was homeless, who was a serious victim of drugs, who had, we sent him to St. Helena Hospital and they helped him rehab. But years later, maybe two, three, four years later, he calls me up out of the blue and he says, I want to help you out. What do you need? I said, I need a motor. How much? I told him. Within minutes, the money showed up on Cash App. He sent me the money and I bought the motor. I sent it to Diamond Garcia. Diamond Garcia is very helpful in getting this boat ministry, if some of you know Diamond Garcia. And he held on to the money for a while. We got it to the factory in Texas. They shipped it, shipped it over here to us. And so this boat is reliable and God has blessed and when God blesses not one time but over and over and over and over and you constantly I'm not asking God for um, a lot of people say God tell me what to do God tell me what to do he gives us a brain you know 
we have intellect, we can contemplate our actions, and if it's not immoral, unethical, illegal, I pray, Lord, close the door. I don't want my will, I want your will to be done. But these desires he puts in our hearts for the ocean and for soul winning and for the more you do it the more you serve the Lord you develop a, a deeper passion for Jesus and for soul winning and you realize the only thing that matters is to bring people to Christ everything else there's no reason to live there's no reason to do anything but I found that I can do it on this boat and it's really special and meaningful and the thought of losing a $50,000 asset because I can't pay the $500 slip fee because one person got angry and thinks that the boat is trash and didn't follow through is a really, it's a really, and I'm not mentioning the name, so I, I'm not trying to bash anyone, but that's the reality. That's what happened. Um, and now we're in a position where we trust the Lord. And I think having faith is going forward, even if it looks like you're gonna lose something and saying, okay, I'm gonna take all that I have and I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna to continue to work on it. I wanna end with, with a couple things. I'm watching the time here, it's 30 minutes, it's just over 30, 31. Sadly, like the story of Job, and Job's wife said, you know, why don't you curse God and die? We have way too many people like that in our own Christian circles and church, you know, Groups. Network. People people are very critical and say, oh, why don't you get get rid of that? And someone said, called me up. Someone even texted me and said, God told them to tell me to just sell it and get rid of it. Sell your this, your property, or this, and move here and move there. People are always telling me what to do. And God to, one day, two very wonderful people told me two different things, which are opposites. And God is... God is telling one of them. The other didn't say God told it, but how do you know how to go forward and which direction to go? Why don't you? Well, that? well, um, that's uh, something that coming to mind out of this uh, presentation or some sort of ideas coming together in the two, three minutes, five minutes, uh, half an hour, actually. The only thing that came to mind was that picture, uh, that illustration that the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament is using to describe the Word of God and it's saying that there are wheels on wheels that looks like are in disorder but in fact they are in perfect order like a like a transmission and when i came here uh, and started to be part of the team here tuesday morning i had the same picture in my mind like things was kind of uh, uh, rolling uh, uh, in a way that didn't make perfect sense and i'm not try to, trying to excuse or to, to accuse this gentleman that created lots of problem here but sometimes the Lord allowed this Amen. wheel in wheels to look like a chaos or something that is in disorder but in fact is a order over there perfect guided by him so I'm sure all this story will end up with the reality well, of God's presence in our lives all these experiences are allowed to bring out what's in our heart my heart you know yeah. this other man's heart because you know i believe that other entities in the universe in heaven are looking down and that's true christ is saying these yep. are my people and uh the devil say no they're my people and so those who follow christ are able to be the representatives of christ's character and what he is trying to do in our hearts and in our lives is perfect us so that we are safe and ready for heaven because heaven is a place where there won't be any a quarreling any sadness any sorrow any pain i would feel comfortable to uh, add something here that could be edited eventually sure. but it's uh, it's a common it's it's okay it's it's a common it's a common way to say that sometimes in your, uh, in real life when you get a real kick in your behind that could be a very good step forward so uh, i pray i hope that uh, uh, all these circumstances will have a uh, positive 
good, great outcome. So. so Gary, um, I want to ask you one last thing here to say. How has the boat here affected your walk with the Lord and you and your life and ministry? Has it ministered to you? It has, it has. I'm trying to find the words to describe it. It's um, humbling. It's it's beauty. It's. I see you are laying out here reading the Bible for hours. And you have time to do that. I do, I do. It's peaceful, it's, you know, yeah, it's peaceful. It's, it's a different environment from the world. Separate from the world. Don't look like the world. Come out here. Seek peace. Have peace. Seek wisdom and knowledge. And we're, in a, we're in a big city, but we're really not. We're in the ocean. We're here we're in separated. nature. We're it's totally different than a house than the world environment. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to share with you our um, brother Taj Paklib and his wife Wati. She um, was, I was with her last week and Gary was there too, feeding homeless, giving food out with Daniel and Cece as well, or another couple that uh, were involved and Cece brought the food and my son was there. Taj was gone, but I just want to remind you of his new videos called World Changers. You know, the Reflections of Hope, this festival is called Hope, and hope is what we have in, in Jesus. What is 1 Corinthians 13, remember? Yeah, the last verse, uh, I believe is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, it's saying that now remain these three, faith, hope, and love. Right. And the most important and the greatest is, is love. Is love right? I guess I could have named the, the boat Charity or Love, but in my other ministry, I had the word charity because of that. And in the Philippines, charity, people were attacking me. In yeah, fact, I had to spend a lot a of money in, in legal yeah. Even in help Romania, to get now. out of some trouble because they said, well, you said charity. I, I, that means love, right? So I looked it up in the Philippine Dictionary and it says... It, it actually means money. It means Ooh, okay. it's, it's I mean, basically means, something yeah. completely different than what I had thought. So hope is a very special word to me, and I believe that um, the only real true hope that we have is knowing that Jesus, he forgave us for our sins, he, he died on the cross, and he's giving us a future that we can last forever, we can live forever. And um, that's our desire to spread that message. So watch um, Reflections of Hope. You can go on YouTube and watch those. And we are just wanting you to to know about that and the world changers they are in. I will feel comfortable to make a note here. Sure. If you think of 1 Corinthians 13, 13, 13, <coughs> hope is in the middle over there. And technically hope will encompass the faith and the love. So I believe is the ideal name for this ministry and for this boat. Yes. Amen. And, and Amen. Ta Taj's and Wati, they're filming in the Philippines right now. So be waiting and watching to see what they come up with. El Nido was a place they were at recently. And uh, that's a wonderful little video they did. And also we want to continue to pray for Daniel Louis's uh, wife, his mother and father and those who... Uh, in, uh, with Janelle, I guess. Um, I'm trying to remember. My aunt and uncle said the nurse. I didn't know her, but she, she was. Uh, for those of you that are watching this that don't know about this, a good friend of mine who I've known since he was a little boy, his name is Daniel, um, was a helicopter pilot and an EMT. And he was working with some other friends of mine in the Philippines, and the helicopter disappeared. And it's been quite a sad sad situation because we can't find any we don't know where it's at we don't know if they're alive or you know deceased but most believe that they crashed into the water and they're gone we just haven't found any, any uh, wreckage or any remains or any proof of that so all right um god bless you all we thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day god bless Bye -bye.